Welcome back to Miniature Mashup. I know it's been a minute since I've posted anything. I really wish I was the kind of creator who can just grind out low-effort content week after week. Maybe an episode where I buy a completely commonplace model, do absolutely nothing to transform it, no kit bashing, no conversions. Heck, I might not even base the thing. Obviously, we do a lot of painting and modding here on Hero Clicks on this channel. This one is next level. A while back, I was sent a copy of Lion Rampant, totally unsolicited, to review on this channel and you may have noticed I never got to it. But I like the rule so much I actually started putting together some medieval fantasy troops. I think I really intended to do a review for it. It's a condensed version. It's pretty great. Maybe not as good as Xenos Rampant, which I wasn't sent and actually purchased myself. Uh, but I greatly prefer sci-fi uh, wargaming to historical medieval wargaming. Uh, while scrambling to put together a second army for Lion Rampant for the review, I realized I already had some Mage Knight cavalry which came from the Lancers expansion of Mage Knight, which focused on mounted troops, or Mounties as they're known in Syruptopia. Uh, this one is an Orc Raider on a Bowser. So I'm taking him off the base with just a pair of pliers. He pops off pretty easily. Don't really need to cut him up or anything. And we can just get a good eyeball full of the factory paint job, and it's just sort of base coated. There's really no highlights or washes or... Shadows aren't really defined. It's put, all the paint's put on very thickly. But I will not be stripping this, although you can strip your Mage Knights. It really depends on the model you're doing. On this one, he doesn't really have a ton of fine detail that I need to uncover. I like it overall, but it suffers from some of the more unforgivable Mage Knight flaws. For one, the plastic they use is not great for fine details, and so the face sculpts are typically very rough. Also, the paint job is absolute dog plums. And Mage Knight made this design choice with their orcs, where the orcs look like the gamma irradiated bulldog from the 2003 Hulk movie. Maybe this biological impossibility is funny or edgy to somebody, but to me it just looks stupid. This extreme biceps to crotchula ratio might explain why this fella is so aggressive. I really do like this mount. He reminds me of Tundro from the Herculoids. By the way, somebody get on WizKids to make me some Herculoids clicks. So far, we've got the Scooby Gang and Space Ghost. I say if we're doing Hanna-Barbera, we've got to get the Herculoids, please. Let's just grind and scrape his head off with a Dremel and a blade. The stuff coming out of here is not rice noodles. It's way too chewy. I had to go in with a second pass with both the Dremel tool and the blade, but when it was finished, we had a nice clean surface on which to mount our Games Workshop work boy head. The orc boy head itself requires a little bit of cleanup from the sprue on the chin there. I'm just doing that with my blade as well. And I think the head looks great on there. It's a very proportional fit. It really looks like it belongs. The base I'm using is some steel sheet that somebody cut with an auger saw, and I found it while I was out on a walk. I'm going to cover it with a two-part epoxy. It smells fantastic, I promise. The secret to a great basing is a delicate, precise touch. Perfection. I use bits of cork for the large rocks and craft sand for the basing, although these days I'm mostly using coffee grounds with just a bit of craft sand mixed into it. Onto our work rider. He's getting a very cool Games Workshop work boy head, which is a great improvement over the sort of the lumpy, behorned thing that was between his shoulders before. This blue boy is a handful of heroes Wolverine figurine. Know what I mean. Jelly, jelly bean. Handful of heroes aren't miniatures per se, but I have worked with them before and I know they paint up very nicely. Uh, these well-muscled thighs and angled calf-length boots will work well with the rest of our orcs anatomy. It's not necessary to pin the halves together with a paper clip, but I like to build my stuff to last. It's not much extra work to do so. Here he is, rider and mount reunited with a nice even layer of gray spray primer. Now I like to start from the inside out when I paint, so the lowest level on this model is the Ang Hag's fleshy bits. I'm going with a Sulcata tortoise inspired coloration for this part. For the shell I'm going with blue because uh, there's going to be lots of leather in this project and the main theme is going to be orange on blue which always looks nice. And for the orc skin, I'm also using my typical orc formula, which is mostly goblin green as the mid-tone. I like to do a couple of washes of brown. I use the Games Workshop sepia. And then I like to glaze on some yellow highlights as well. 
As a rule, I start with mid-tones, and then I work in the shadows second, and uh, that'll, that'll be with a wash typically. Not always an official wash, sometimes I'll just mix water and paint. You don't always need to use the expensive wash. Sometimes I'll use ink. I have a bunch of alcohol-based inks. I like them a lot. Uh, if you're not working with inks at your table, if you don't have an alcohol-based ink, I really suggest you try them. I think they, they give you another very different, very effective tool in your toolbox as a painter, and you're missing out if you don't at least give them a try. They're really pretty reasonably priced, too. I've got a... can't remember what I spent on mine. It was not much. Once I've done the washes, I like to dry brush highlights on or I'll glaze them on depending on the surface in question. If the surface is very smooth, typically I'll go with a glaze. If it's very textured, then I'll go with a dry brush. This quilted pattern on the saddle makes me want to eat fruity pebbles, although so do most things. For the horns on the mount, I'm going with sort of a bull pattern that I'm not entirely happy with, but I feel like it works okay. Doing a pattern quilt like this is a challenge because really every color needs its own highlights and shadows and so it is a lot of extra work. It would be simpler to have just done this saddle behind him in sort of a brown but to me the whole thing sort of strikes me as more of like a horse blanket. It looks puffy and the spots to me it looks like a padded thing that would keep the beast warm or maybe himself. He's already got a bedroll on the back, maybe that's what I was thinking when I was painting this up. But it's certainly more interesting to add the extra le levels of color than just another brown on top of a brown tortoise. So I have to say, I am completely on the Push Pop toy palette thing. Like, I was using a wet palette for a while, and I think those are great tools for mixing paint, but with the homemade ones, I find they, they really need to be maintained. They have to be cleaned out regularly, and if you don't paint for a while, they can get moldy. And and I just, look, that's an that's a extra thing to take care of. Like, it's I'm terrible at brush maintenance already. One of the reasons I don't invest in expensive brushes, you'll notice I'm always using cheap nylon brushes. The entire time you've watched this channel I've been on for, I guess it's coming up on a decade. I mean, seven, eight years. I don't know. A lot longer than I care to admit. Uh, I've never invested in a very expensive brush because I can't keep them alive very long. So I, I just stick with the cheap ones. I, I can get these on clearance often at Walmart. The creative bug hits me. I just want to slap stuff together and paint. It's just the whole thing. The, with the Pop Toy palettes, they clean up so incredibly easy. They have all these little separate pockets. They keep the paint wet, probably because it's concave and it's silicone. I For, for whatever reason, it's not the same as just putting paint on the inside of a plastic cap or whatever you were using before. They work very well as palettes. Do they keep them as wet as long as a wet palette does? No, but it's certainly, I wouldn't say com comparable because, you know, the wet palette, it's almost like indefinitely as long as you keep the moisture in there, but very long, certainly long enough to really work with it and you don't feel like you're just wasting paint. And it also gives you ample opportunity to mix colors, and to clean them out, you just let them dry out. The next day, you pop them, and the paint comes right out, and it's ready to use again. They're really awesome. That's where I'm at now. For silver, I like to put a blue undercoat, you know, a very dark blue, especially on a fantasy piece like this, before dry brushing metal on top of it. I also want to call out my Instagram page. I have a miniature mashup Instagram and I've been posting there and it's stuff that I'm not making videos of. Not that I'm separating the two intentionally, but there's a lot of stuff on there. I've been getting more into horror, uh, painting stuff for my Call of Cthulhu and for the Doomed. Just generally in horror, it's kind of inspiring me. It's just where I'm at right now. Not that that's what's coming up. I have a lot of backlog of stuff I've been painting. Uh, that isn't necessarily horror related. Check out the Instagram page. I'm gonna put the link for that in the description below. It's something I don't think I've been promoting. So there's just some substance there if you wanna join us there, if you wanna see pictures of this. If you're interested in acquiring this piece, just contact me on the Miniature Mashup Facebook page. The link for that is in the description below. Got about a thousand people in there. It's a really nice little community. It's a great place to see this project, pictures of it, pictures of past projects, and to know what's coming up in the future. I'm making the rider a little rain to pull on out of a bit of plastic twist tie, but some twine could also work just as well, maybe even better. And let's take a look at the finished product. I think it looks pretty neat and is quite a good conversion slash upgrade 
from what it originally looked like. What do you guys think? Why not leave me a comment in the bottom? As always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you come back soon. We'll have another one up next Saturday. We're going to try to maintain a production schedule. I know I say that a lot, but this time I really mean it. Uh, thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.